Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, today I'm actually uh, giving you a date that's just outside the Tudor period, but it's to do with the Tudor man. But on this day in history, the 24th of December 1604, Sir Thomas Cornwallis, controller of the household of Mary I and member of parliament, died at about the age of 86. A wonderful age for that period. Cornwallis was active in putting down Kett's Rebellion in 1549 and in 1553, after originally proclaiming for Lady Jane Grey as Queen in Ipswich, he swapped sides and swore allegiance to Mary I. So let me tell you a bit more about this interesting Tudor man. Suffolk man Sir Thomas Cornwallis was born in around 1518, 1519 and was the eldest son of Sir John Cornwallis and his wife, Mary Sulyard. Sir John Cornwallis served as steward to the household of Prince Edward, the future King Edward VI, from 1538 to 1544. In 1539, when he was about 20, Thomas was admitted to Lincoln's Inn, one of London's four inns of the court. And by 1540, he was married, taking Anne Jerningham, daughter of Sir John Jerningham, as his bride. The couple went on to have two sons, William and Charles, and four daughters, including Elizabeth, who married Sir Thomas Kitson. In December 1548, in the reign of King Edward VI, Thomas was knighted, and in 1549 he served under William Parr, Marquis of Northampton, against the rebels of Kett's Rebellion in Norfolk. The rebels took Cornwallis as a prisoner when they took the city of Norwich, but John Dudley, Earl of Warwick, defeated the rebels and freed their prisoners. In 1553, Thomas was Sheriff of Norfolk and Suffolk, and in July 1553, following the receipt of a letter from John Dudley, who is now Duke of Northumberland, he proclaimed Lady Jane Grey as Queen Jane at Ipswich. He was accompanied by Lord Thomas Wentworth and some other prominent Suffolk gentlemen. However, as I explained in my video from the 11th of July, while Thomas and the others were still in Ipswich, Thomas Polly or Thomas Polly, receiver to Mary, who was the daughter of King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, came to the marketplace on Mary's orders and proclaimed his mistress hereditary Queen of England. His proclamation was received well by the Ipswich people, and this caused Sir Thomas Cornwallis to have second thoughts. When he heard that the people of London were very ill disposed to Northumberland and the great men of the realm for disinheriting Mary, and that trouble was brewing, Thomas decided to take action. On the 12th of July, he changed sides. He recanted his previous proclamation and proclaimed for Mary instead. Mary was proclaimed Queen in London on the 19th of July 1553 and she rewarded Thomas by making him a member of her council and making his wife a lady of the Privy Chamber. In Mary's first parliament, Thomas was MP for Gasson in Surrey and in October 1553, he and Sir Robert Bowes travelled to Berwick to negotiate with Scottish commissioners. In that December, they were able to negotiate a code of border laws. In January 1554, Mary sent Thomas and Sir Edward Hastings to entreat with Thomas Wyatt the Younger, who was intent on marching on London. But Wyatt went ahead with his rebellion. In March 1554, Thomas was a member of the commission that tried the rebel leader. In February 1554, Thomas was also sent to Ashridge to fetch Mary's half-sister, Princess Elizabeth, to London due to Mary believing that she was involved in the rebellion. Elizabeth pleaded illness. Thomas opposed those on the council who pushed for Elizabeth's imprisonment, but she did end up in the Tower of London for two months. In 1554, Thomas also served as Member of Parliament for Grand Pound, and in May of that year, he was made Treasurer of Calais, serving under his cousin, Sir Thomas Wentworth. In 1557, Thomas reported to Mary on the state of Calais's defences, stating that they were inadequate. In December of that year, following the death of Sir Robert Rochester, Thomas was made controller of the household. And in January 1558, the same month that Calais fell to the French, 
he was elected as MP for Suffolk. He was named as one of Mary I's executors, but after her death and Elizabeth's accession, the Catholic Thomas lost royal favour and was removed from his position as controller and from the Privy Council. He retired to his home, Brome Hall. However, his quiet life in Suffolk was disturbed when he was arrested with Sir Thomas Kitson, his son-in-law, in 1569 after the rising of the North. He was interrogated regarding his close links with the Duke of Norfolk, but after a year he was released, having sworn loyalty to the Queen. Thomas conformed in a religious sense for a while, but by 1578 he was no longer conforming. He was close friends with William Sissel, Lord Burley, Elizabeth I's chief advisor, so perhaps that protected him. In 1588, when England was under threat of invasion from Spain, Thomas was confined to the home of his son-in-law, Sir Thomas Kitson. But after that had been dealt with, he was allowed back home. In 1600, his brother William, a seminary priest who'd been imprisoned, was allowed to live with him. In March 1604, Thomas made his will, adding to it in the November. Sir Thomas Cornwallis died on this day in history, Christmas Eve 1604. Four days later, he was buried at the church at Brome. Thomas's eldest son, William, died in November 1611 and Charles died in 1629. Thomas's grandson by William, Frederick Cornwallis, was made first Baron Cornwallis and served as treasurer of the household to King Charles II. Tomorrow, Christmas Day, I'll be talking about a very un-Christmassy topic, I'm afraid, witch hunting. Yes. Tomorrow's On This Day in History is about a Tudor magistrate and witch hunter. Do make sure you're subscribed, click there, and that you've hit the bell so you don't miss that. But don't worry, I'll also share a link to my video on Christmas in Tudor times to make up for it. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 24th of December 1545, Christmas Eve, King Henry VIII made his final speech to Parliament. The king was concerned about the religious divisions in his realm and so chastised the lords and commons for their disagreements and also the clergy for provoking this discord. I shared some of his speech, which included the wonderful words Mumpsimus and Sumpsimus in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Now today is obviously Christmas Eve, so do check out the video that Teasel and I did on one of the Tudor traditions associated with it, the Yule Log. You'll find a link to that in the description too. Take care and have a very happy Christmas. I'll see you soon. Oh, and do feel free to give me a like and leave a comment. Bye-bye.